Business.com podcast with Tony Roark and Kevin O'Flaherty. Shootyourbusiness.com, making you money. Share it on Facebook, share it on LinkedIn, Twitter, our blog, YouTube video, listen to our podcast, it's so hot that it's burning up the stereo. Welcome to the SeizeYourBusiness.com podcast, coming to you from our speakeasy in lovely downtown Downers Grove, Illinois. Our guest today is Ben Chernivsky from This Is Feeling Photography. Our hosts are Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law and myself, Tony Rourke from ADR Business Resource Group. We invite you to check out our website, SeizeYourBusiness.com. If you find this podcast helpful or if you just want to help us out, we would appreciate it if you would review us on iTunes or share our podcast on social media. So without further ado, I'll hand us over to Kevin. Ben, thanks for being here today. Uh, our topic is going to be expanding possibilities. I, I've changed that, actually. Okay, what would you like to talk about? I think, that's, I, I think it works really well with the podcast. You don't even have to edit that out. Uh, call it creating possibility. Creating possibility. Yeah. All right. See, now we just expanded and created a possibility there with a the new topic. I, I think we did. I think we did, yeah. <laughs> so, so, Ben, tell us a little bit about your business. So I'm a wedding photographer, uh, wedding and portraiture photography, um, and, 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 and I love it. I have to tell you that. And I, and I want people to know that um, <laughs> uh, I would never I would never want to just say I am just a wedding photographer because it's such bull crap. Um, I, I, I really love what I do. I love creating um, real authentic moments with with my clients. Um, but yeah, long and short, I'm, I'm a wedding and portrait photographer. How long have you been in photography? Yeah, full time uh, since August 15th of 2011. I started This Is Feeling Photography just actually uh, August 15th in 2014. So um, how long yeah. have you been in photography? Oh, man. I remember when I when I was I was like I was like one of those kids that flipped through National Geographic when I was like four or five years old. I couldn't even read the text. OK. Um, and that, that's what really got me into it. But I didn't actually like pick up a, a, a real like proper uh, SLR camera until uh, actually January of 2003. I was uh, I was interning at Disney World of all really? places uh, when I was a college student at College of DuPage. Um, and I got back from this internship and it, like the world was just depressing. <laughs> like I got back, working at Disney World, like the happiest place, uh, you know, in, on earth, they say. And it was actually pretty, it was an, it was an amazing place. But you come back to Chicago, it's overcast, it's it's gray. Um, and, and I had to go back to COD, I was a new page and, and I just, I was like, you know what, I need something to uplift me. And so I just, I enrolled in a, in a, in a photography class. I didn't even have a camera. I went on eBay. I bought, um, a, a bag of cam, like a, a, a camera kit was like 275 bucks. I got it like overnighted to me. So it would, it would arrive to my house before the first day of class. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that's when I started taking pictures, 2003. Wait a minute. Well, hold up. Has it always been your dream to do photography or did that dream come into being sometime a year or so before 2003? Because I'm trying to get to a point. It's kind of cool that you decided that. I mean, that's a short time ago when you decided. 2003? When you think about it, it's a fairly short time ago when you decided to. You got to remember, Ben, we're a lot younger than Tony. Reed, so. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a long time to us. <laughs> hey, yeah. long man. Yeah, well, hey, yeah. Long for I mean, either, we, in 2003, I think I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was, hey. I was 19, turning 20 that April. Um, so yeah, Tony, that, that was, was like a, my that was like ago. 12 years ago, man. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, dude. Life is no, life is flying not, by. No, no, no. Because <laughs> see, the reality is, is that boy, we're, this one, I told you, this one's going to go crazy. <laughs> the reality is, most people figure a path out. Right. They go to school and they follow that path. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. He was on a path and then decided, oh, no, I'm getting off this train track. Oh, man. That's where I'm going. <laughs> okay. I, he got off that train track. Yeah. In midstream and said, oh, hell no, I'm done. Yeah. And then what? Twelve years later, here you are. Yeah. That's pretty damn good. I don't care the age. I yeah. just don't because I guess you got saying. off the track. Yeah. I dig that, man. Yeah, and I, I kind of, I mean, that's that's kind of like the story of my life. Like when I'm inspired by something, I, I I pretty much go at it like full steam ahead. Yeah. And that could be that could be a weakness of mine, but it's uh it's been working out pretty well so far. Well, cool. Okay. <laughs> well, and Ben, I know for a fact because you know we've done some work together that you're not just some bohemian photographer. You've got a like full fledged business with employees and yeah. and uh, and a, another business that you're working on setting up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. So I, I think I've discovered this and, you know, I, I, so I, I, I definitely, uh, 
I see myself as a creative. Um, but over the years, I've, I've slowly been letting go of being a creative and identifying as a creative. Uh, and I think that's part of like the, the idea of uh, creating possibility um, because I've been pushed. And, and, and it, it was hard for me to admit that I love business. It was really, really hard for me to admit that um, because I didn't want it. I didn't, I didn't want to be the grumpy old businessman that was balding and overweight and unhappy with his life. But it's like, where did that, where did that picture come from? Why did I paint that picture of business? <laughs> you know? And, and, and so I had to learn to, to really like em, embrace uh, other things other, other than uh, just being creative. creative. Okay. And, and I found myself in a position where it's like, I, 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 uh, I love the entrepreneurial spirit of, of doing new things. How do you think the creative side, even though you're trying to, you know, put, push that down a little bit. Oh, I'm not pushing it down. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just not holding on to you it. You're not holding on yeah. to it so tight, yeah. but uh, obviously you use it in business still. Yeah, I mean, definitely. you have coming up with creative solutions to problems, things of that sort. Yes. Do you, um, no, no question there. I just stated a fact, I guess. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, I think it was a good clarification too, because, uh, you know, you don't have to let go of, um, who you think it's not about, it's not about, uh, like downsizing, like, uh, certain qualities that you have and saying, I don't want it to exist. Um, it, it's about just embracing it mm-hmm. and saying, okay, I'm, I'm a creative person. Uh, I, I can be creative in everything that, that I do. Um, and then, and then, and bringing that to other, other parts of your life that you really want. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of qualities that an artist has that will translate really fluidly into being a business person. I, I noticed that myself. I used to play in bands, and a lot of the lessons that I learned from putting together a team, you know, and marketing and being a perfectionist about a product and trying to, <laughs> you know, it, that that translated really easy into opening up my law firm. I, I, I it was a if I hadn't played in bands before doing that, I would have not had the experience I anywhere near needed to to start a law firm. So I'm sure that, you know, a lot of the things you the the synapses in your brain that fire when you're doing, you know, your art also fire when you're creating your business. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I came to you for the right reason at that point. <laughs> rock star, like Lord, no. <laughs> um yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh I, I I you can't I mean I don't want to say you can't change the way you think you can, but uh, they're just, they're just a, certain parts of you that just like are, are a part of your nature. Um, you know, you've, you've created a habit out of being this way or that way. Cause you just do it. Uh, you live that way. And yeah, you're right. Like I, 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 and, and actually it was just like this last weekend that I really realized that I, uh, I, I can't stop being creative and it's just a part of who I am. Um, and that, that was a pretty cool realization to have. So yeah, you're right. Like it's just, boom, it, it, it's happening when I'm, when I am, uh, applying it to, or when, whenever I'm, uh, do like, man, even I think like I, I creatively wash the dishes. I, I do. I, I, I must, <laughs> I, should, I should look into that a little bit more. <laughs> well, what I like about the whole idea you're talking about here, because your topic was creating possibility yeah. and part of that creation of whatever possibility you want to have or bring into reality is bringing in other aspects into your being, which you said was your business. You didn't want to be a businessman. No, I don't want to be an old (laughs) businessman, but now you've accepted that, brought it in and look at you now. So cool. Mm -hmm. Mm So I got a long way to go, man. We all do that, that, that game will be done when they put me six foot under. Yeah. That's how I look at it. I'm yep. always going to have to be learning something. Yeah, seriously, man. And even when you get your business model set up where it's functioning and making you money and you're making a profit, there's always a next level to take it to and always something more to learn about. You know, I'm you, learning, you're learning that one. Learning aren't you? how to edit sound and video <laughs> and, and, you know, deal with social media for this podcast is an extension <laughs> of my business. It's, uh, you know, there's always a next level to take things to. And, uh, you know, that's. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes it like like art. You know, you never you're never done making a song. When I'm when I'm writing music, the song is never complete. I'll listen to songs that we've recorded in a studio, you know, two years ago, and I'll be like, you know, if I'm ever in a band again, we're taking the song, we're changing it, we're making it better. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing with the business. There's always something that you can tweak and make better yeah. and take to the next level. Seriously, I, I used to in college, so I ended up uh, finishing with a creative writing degree in poetry of all things. 
Um, and, and, and that was something I realized when I was a creative writing major that the work that even even the piece of art is never done. You'll mm -hmm. like I was never satisfied with my poems. Um, and, and one thing I, I had to learn was like, you know what? Just you got to put you got to put a dot at, at the end of the sentence. You got to close the book and, and be OK with how far you've gotten. Sure. Um, and, and that was that was like a, that was a tough lesson because I always wanted like perfection, perfection, perfection. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing about like uh, pursuing anything is like it's it's a it's a creation. You're creating it every single day, even even with writing. Uh, photography, I, I really don't feel like it's ever done. Yeah, well, and I think putting a period at the end of the sentence is important because you can drive yourself crazy being a perfectionist, <laughs> both in art and business. It's, you know, it, you can, your song will never be good enough, your photo will never be, you know, perfect, and your business systems will never be functioning on the level that, you know, the, the they'll never be a 10, they might be a nine and a half. That's something that I I learned. That, or a three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try you, you try to get them above a three, but you know when when I I spent the past year trying to get my business systems functioning so that I could be the funnel to pump pump uh, pump new business into the machine yeah. and the machine would work and it would execute well every time and everyone would get great service and I worked on that for so long and suddenly we were at the point where okay we're done I you know there's nothing. There's nothing more for me to do here. I could I could focus on it more. I could micromanage it to death, but my efforts would be better spent saying, okay, I've completed this project of systematizing my mm -hmm. business. Now it's time to focus on you know something else, marketing the business or you know whatever that next thing is. But yep. you could you know you could go nuts trying to be a perfectionist in every little aspect of your business. Let me ask you a question about that. Um, you got your system down mm -hmm. to a point where you're happy with it. Do you ever see yourself going back? To sure. look at it and going mm, more <laughs> tweaks because I would think that as you learn each year you're going to learn something I know you you're going to learn a lot in a year and you would have to pick something up that you want to incorporate into that system business is kind of whack-a-mole sometimes absolutely you know you right now I've got that mole whacked but as I'm whacking another mole it might pop up again or you're, you're right I you know, I, I might learn something and want to make that better, but there's there's a bigger fire to put out somewhere sure. else. Or there's a flip side. Yeah. That mole hit back. Elaborate. The mole hits back. <laughs> it, it, it can whack us. You know, a customer can make a day go crazy. Oh, yeah. They may make a request. Something bad can happen. That's the mole whacking you back. It's a, ah, 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 gotcha. <laughs> when you think you got that sucker, it gets you back. Well, it, and that's that's why you try to systematize everything because you know if you have a, a good enough infrastructure in place, mm -hmm. you don't, as the owner of the business, have to spend your day dealing with that. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes that might be part of your process where you make the call as a business owner to make the client feel better. But if you've got a good enough staff and they're trained well enough, you're not going to be the, the you know the CEO of Walmart doesn't you know focus on every time someone sends in a letter to Walmart right. complaining about <laughs> service. They've got processes for That's that, right. and hopefully they're good processes. Let's get to your topic, creating sure. uh, creating possibilities. Yeah. Well, what do you mean by that? What do, what do you want to what do you want to talk about in that arena? Uh, well, I, I think it's just been a pattern that I've been appreciating a lot in my business, uh, and it, it all comes back to uh, a, a business mentor, uh, a business coach mm -hmm. that that I started working with in two thousand. 13. Uh, and he just really, really, really pushed my limits and I appreciated it so much. And it's, it's gained, it's created so much in my business that I never thought would have been possible. And I, and I, and so in turn, I'm just, I'm really, I'm really grateful, um, because I'm seeing like the positive results of it. And I, I feel like a more free thinker. I feel like a more free creative I feel like I've been liberated of like my own, uh, the, all the weight that I've put on myself. Um, and, and, and this is still, I, I have to say like, this is, this is a area that I'm still, um, exploring is, is, uh, creating possibility. Um, but, but I know, I know there's something there and I know it's, it's been really, really great for, for me and my business. And, and to give you a, a concrete, uh, cause I feel like I'm talking about theory right here. Yeah, no. I'm talking about a bunch of ideas. You were going to get that question very <laughs> shortly. Yeah. I was like, you want, you want some results here, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, to, to, it goes back to like me identifying with being a creative. I was, I was a photographer. I wanted to create the best 
photographs ever. And <laughs> um, the truth is, is like great photographs don't make you money. Yeah. And and that is that's a really, 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 really hard lesson to learn as a creative. You don't want to admit it, man. You want to you value what you just created. It's like your little kid. You just took that photo and you added it, and it, it means so much to you. Um, but it's a it's a kick in it's like a, it's a slap in the face when like the client that hired you doesn't doesn't value it like like you do. Um, and that that's what I so appreciate about my my uh, my business coach is he he kind of made that connection. Um, it, it had been something I had been thinking about for a long time. Um, and I was investing into business education. Um, and I, and I thought I had a successful business at the time. Um, and he kind of looked at me and, and he, I could, I could see he was like laughing at me. He wasn't really laughing mm -hmm. at me, but I, I could tell like the way he was talking to me, it was just like, um, he, he wasn't taking me seriously. Uh, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't think that I was as successful as I could have been. Um, and he pushed me. Um, he pushed me to, to be a better businessman. He pushed me to serve my clients better. He pushed me to take my business seriously. And I was super, super resistant to it. Um, and it's funny cause our, our very first conversation was about money mm -hmm. and, um, we met at this creative business workshop out in Colorado in May of 2013, um, called business as an art form. And uh, I didn't even know he was a speaker there. It was a very small conference, only like 40 or 50 people. And uh, I I'd just gotten there and I just walked in this room and there was a group of people there. And I just, I just went and uh, stood into the, yeah, I just fit myself in that circle. And Steve was just having to be, uh, oh, so that's his name, Steve mm -hmm. Separito. He, he's from Australia. Um, and he, he, he was just standing right there. Um, and we just started small talk for a little bit. And he, he started asking me like the, the real, uh, the real important questions. He, he, he's just very good at listening, very good at asking questions. Um, and so we got, we got to a place where we were talking about business and, and, um, what that was like for me right away. And I, I remember like, I kind of, at one point he, he was like, Ben, you should be pulling in like a million dollars a month. And I was like, what? I was like, what? Like, where did you get that? Like, I was like, I was like, you, you were the, you were the issue with, with this photography industry. It's you, people like you that just think about money all the time. You're, you're taking the spirit away from what we're doing. Uh, and, and, and I was, I was like really, I, I like literally fought him. I was like, I was convinced that like, uh, you know, making 80 grand a year as a, as a photographer was like successful and I was happy and all this. Um, and he just saw straight through it. He just saw straight through it and he saw something else in me that I didn't see. Um, and, and, the, and, and the coolest thing about this conversation guys, and I know this might be hard to understand was that he actually wasn't even talking to me about money. Mm -hmm. I get that. He was not talking to me about money. He was not talking to me about how much money I was making a year. I was turning it into a conversation about money. Um, he was talking to me about value. He was talking to me about how valuable of a service I was, I was offering my clients. Um, and, and it was just something that I, I had no sense of at the time. Um, so how so, did that translate into kind of a changed action from you? Like, yeah. Um, that is okay. How did it, how did it translate? So how did it translate into like, did, was results? it like you're given a valuable service, you should raise your prices or, you know, how, how did you, what was the light bulb that said, Oh yeah, he's right. Here's what I need to do <laughs> differently. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was more of a conversation throughout the entire like three day conference. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was actually like his, his business partner, her name's Kelly. Um, it was the end of the day. We were all just having some drinks, um, at the bar and just, just chatting. And Kelly just started talking to me about photography. And, and, um, I remember she, 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 she was asking me like, uh, if I'd ever been photographed and, um, I was like, you know what? I, I hadn't, I, I've, I've never actually been photographed with, with my wife, Vanessa. Um, and she kind of put me in the shoes. Well, that, that was the first like realization. I was like, holy shit, like I'm a photographer and I've never actually like gone through my own photographic experience. How can I serve my clients? And I think that's part of what she was pointing out to me. Um, we, I think we were talking about the idea of like value and what we were doing as photographers. And, uh, and then she asked this one question and this freaking changed my world, man. She asked me one question and it was, it was, it was applicable, 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 was applicable <laughs> to me. Um, she, she simply asked me, Ben, what, what do you love about your wife? It's quite a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and 
I, I, didn't, I know this sounds terrible. I didn't know what to say. It was hard for me to say it. Um, but the, 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 the thing was, because I felt like I was like put on the spot. And it's not a question that a lot of people ask. You know, it's like, what do you, what do you love That's, about this? That will this? throw most people, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And I had to think about it. And I, I'll be damned. It was the first time I understood what it was like to be a client. And I, I just realized I was doing everything so backwards in my business. I, I wasn't even asking questions like that. How could I serve my client? I'm shooting a wedding. How can I serve my client? If I don't even know what they love about their their partner, how can I serve my client if I don't understand that sense of discomfort when when that question is asked? I mean, I'm I'm trying to photograph. Um, yeah, we'll just pause it. No, keep yeah, going. We're live. Sure. We're live. Keep buddy. going. All right. All right. All right. This is not gotta, gonna stop. We got to knock on the door. I mean, I'm yeah yeah. Um, are you sure? I, I, yeah. Keep going. I, I, want, I, want, I want Kevin to be a part of this. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm go okay on, with stopping. Man. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> well, the, the idea was just like, how, how could I serve my client without, without understanding? Like basically what really, 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 really floored me is I didn't even value what I was doing as a photographer. I was simply taking pictures because I was good at it. And it was the first time that I realized that I – like I – I didn't understand the weight of what I was doing with a camera. Um, because when, when she asked me like, what did I love about my wife? Um, it, it just so much went through my head. Like, Oh man, my photo, like photography is a representation of love. It's a representation of what you see. I don't even have like real authentic photographs of me and my wife on the wall. What do I love about my wife? Uh, am I doing, uh, like basically am I practicing what I'm preaching as a photographer? And, and I wasn't. Um, and, and so the rest of the weekend, I was just kind of in this like days of, oh my gosh, I, I really have to think about what I'm doing and, and how I'm doing it so I can better serve my client. Cause I knew I loved photography. Um, but it, 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 it was selfish. I was basically like, I'm a wedding photographer cause I'm a good photographer and that's it. Correct me if I'm wrong. It yeah. doesn't sound like you had a real strong why there. What's that? Oh, oh yeah, like why I was running a business. No, why you were in the photography. Why photography was yeah. so. It was like it's a craft. Sure. It's a thing to do. Yeah. But you, it doesn't sound like you had a strong why. It would have been a, it. yeah. And if you if you would have asked me at the time, I would have had a ton of answers. But it would have all revolved around my own passions. Okay. You know, it wouldn't. I don't think it would have revolved anything about like um, serving my clients. Yeah. Authentically. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. it sounds like uh, a switch was flipped for you where you started really thinking about, you know, everyone says put the client first, but it sounds like you really thought of it from the client's perspective and, and what you were bringing out for them as opposed to just you making good art. You know, in, in the legal world, that's, you know, I might be able to read and write really well and argue in front of a judge, but it's more of it, you, every first year associate can do that. It's about finding a solution for the client and helping them in their time of need and being mm -hmm. an advocate. Yeah. As opposed to just doing your craft. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of the switch that was flipped for you where you're thinking, oh, you know, I, I can really help people with this as opposed to just, you know, make good pictures? Totally. I, I really think so. Because, Kevin, I don't think you would be able to create a successful law firm uh, if every single one of your lawyers and everyone that was working in that company um, was doing it for themselves. If, if they sat down with someone and said, I am a great lawyer and I love being a lawyer, um, like, that's not going to – that, that – that no one's going to hire you because of that. Then it's going to be all about you. And I, I can make good money at what I'm doing. Uh, you have to serve your clients. I think in a really practical way, like uh, you know, you have to serve your clients. Um, but you're, you're the only lawyer I've worked with, so I, I really don't know what the perspective is. Maybe there are lawyers out there that are like that. No, they're all worse than me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every stinking one. Of them. Uh, so how did that making that switch translate into you know? better business results for you because it's it's kind of the opposite you're not focusing on the business results you're focusing on just doing a good job for your client but it, that tends to give you better business results yeah yeah um i think it was more of like a mental like a mentality uh switch um because uh how do i put it and 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 I, there was a lot more that i was learning at the time too it's kind of like an inner interconnected web of like what what helped my business um, I think, I think practically, wait, wait, could you repeat the question? What was it? Yeah. So, so you, you talked to this business coach yep. and he told you what, well, one, you should be making a million dollars a month. Sure, sure. There's right. a lot of, there's a lot of unlocked or, uh, potential <laughs> that you can unlock in this business. The other thing he told you was, you know, help me, uh, look inside your client's head to what, you know, 
think about what it's like to be a client and give them mm. the best service you can. And that, you told me that was the light bulb that went off for you. How did that actually translate into, you know, changing your business model and, yep. you know, making, making your business stronger, better, faster, you know, whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, so, oh man, this is going to get in like the technicalities of running a, a photography business. No, that's okay. Uh, we're, we're all, our tagline is, you know, actionable <laughs> strategies actionable for your business. Strategies. So okay. We, we okay. want the nuts and bolts. Um, so what that looked like, well, I started working with Steve shortly after that. Um, and he, and he really, he really like pushed me to, 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 to think about what I was doing as a photographer. Um, it, it ended up becoming, uh, uh, it ended up like what I, what I was doing with Steve after that conference, when I was working with him, what, what turned into like, uh, what created results was looking at my business and seeing where I was, um, destroying like well, let me put it this way i had to look at my own business and see where i was limiting the the growth of my business so me so me not knowing what i was doing in my business me making my business about me me not knowing how to sell me not wanting to create albums after weddings me not wanting to um produce canvas wraps and fine art products for my clients just because I didn't want to, that was all, all, all limiting what I could do to create something amazing for my couples. Um, and, and this gets back to the art, the art thing about being a wedding photographer. Uh, previously I was, I was photographing, I was photographing weddings and I was, um, literally taking the pictures, putting them like editing them, creating a cool collection of photos, putting them on a disc and sending it to them. I wouldn't, I would never hear back from clients. I would never hear like the, the thank yous. We really loved it. We really, it was amazing. And and I look back now and I'm like, like oh, no shit, man. Like I was sending him a collection of like 700 photographs on a CD. I don't know if you guys have like looked like, like used a CD drive in, in the past, but like you, you load up like these eight megabyte photos, you click on one and it takes like 12, se 12 seconds to load up <laughs> and, and I'm making them go through 700, 800. I would, I would get, I would lose all my patience after like 20 photos and I'd be like, okay, um, Ben was as good as his first 20 photos. And, um, so I, I really, 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 really had to get out of my own comfort zone as, as a self satisfying thing, a self self satisfying artist, um, in order to deliver something that was good and amazing to the client. So it sounds like you turned your business into your we talked about business as an art form. It sounds like you really turned your business in, into your art form. You know, you still got, you're still an artist with your photos, but you were thinking about how to make a better business as opposed to make better photography, make yeah, a better client experience. And, and, and this is a, this is a cool part, guys. This is where it's really, really interesting. Um, for, for any of you, out, for any of you that are creative, for any of you that are just really, really good at something innately, um, when you expand, when you, when you create new possibility, when you incorporate something new and bring it into your business, uh, or into your life, you're going to make everything else better too. You're not going to be, you're not going to ignore other parts. You, you're going to make it better. Um, because me learning to be a better businessman, me learning to look less at myself and more at my clients, me thinking about what I was really giving to my clients, it, it made me a better artist. I'm a more satisfied artist now. I love what I do because what I'm delivering to people is amazing. And I know it and I love it. Before I, I couldn't, I, I would, I would deliver things that I, I had like my collection in there that I loved and I loved this. And I posted a few on Facebook and I put it on my gallery, but like the client didn't really see that. Like I, I, I gave them this, like this big collection of crap that they had to go through on a CD drive. Uh, now I know that like what I'm going to give to my clients is, is really truly emotionally driven and, and, and fun. And I can tell that to people and people feel that energy when they come in and they meet with me before a wedding. Um, because I know I have a beautiful studio space and I create a beautiful slideshow that talks about their wedding day story and what we've learned about them as a couple. Um, when we show them a collection at the wedding, we premiere or at, at the studio after the wedding, we premiere this beautiful slideshow. It's only 150, maybe 200 photographs. And then we show them a pre-designed album. We show them some collections of canvas uh, wall art. And, and could you imagine like, could you imagine like being uh, being someone that just got married four four weeks ago and you walk in and it is like your own gallery. It is your own story. And it is just it's amazing for people. And I know it because they see it and they feel it like 
people are crying. Uh, guys are blown away. They're like, like one of the one of the comments I get a lot from guys is like, I can't believe you made this, and they're pointing at themselves, look like that, and they're pointing at the photos that we've taken. People just have so much, uh, so many issues with self-esteem and how they view themselves. And now I know I'm, I, I'm literally helping these people um, see something that they never saw before. And and to me, that's a that's a that's an amazing gift to be able to give to people. And I love doing that. So can you see how like before it was a self-serving craft where mm -hmm. I was creating photos that looked good to look good for other photographers. And now I'm creating photos that I really do think are making people feel better about the love that they have for one another, what they felt at their wedding day and something that will help them celebrate the future and get through maybe some hard times in their wedding. And I'm having this physical, real products. I'm showing them an album that they can put on their, their coffee table. Um, I'm, I'm showing them artwork that they could put on a wall. So it's not like their wedding photos just um, don't don't just like disappear on some Facebook feed. Like Kevin, did, did, did you get any printed work from, from your wedding? I, you know what? You'd have to ask my wife. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, I'm going to say, say that's a big no. <laughs> um, Probably not. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that's the thing. Like, and did, did you invest a lot into your wedding photography? I uh, I was uh, not very involved in my wedding photography. Yeah. I'm sorry. To yeah, say no, no, no. It, it, no. Was, uh, oh, oh my gosh. And it's so... I basically went where my uh, my wife told me yeah. to go. And... and and you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame that on you. I'm not gonna blame that on your wife. I'm gonna blame that on your wedding photographer. Your wedding photographer didn't reach out to you and and say, Kevin, I want to know about you, and yeah. I want to know what's important about your wedding day. And and that's the difference between um, a self satisfying and self serving photographer and creative and artist and one who is serving his client because you know what you were one of the clients and you never you never were able to like voice your opinion and what was important to you about your wedding day no wonder you don't have any photographs that you don't look at at your wedding <laughs> I'm not surprised so how did you uh, how did you break that mold because everyone wants to do this everyone wants to be an above and beyond service yeah firm basically or or, or company. And everyone says they are, but not everyone <laughs> not everyone does the introspection to say, how can I really be different and better serve my clients? Yep. What what was that process like for you to break your mold? It was hard as hell. It was really, really hard. And I hate to say it, but well, no, I, I don't hate to say it. I love saying it. Um, guys, it it takes looking into yourself. Um as a business owner, if you want to create a better business, if you want to be, if if you really want to serve your client, it it, it is about being selfless. It is about not looking at yourself. It is about getting a real perspective on who you are. Um, and maybe you get that from someone you trust. Maybe you uh, find a, a business mentor. Um, but so, however you do it, you, you, have to, you have to get a real um, clear picture of, of what you're actually doing and if it's actually serving your, uh, your, your business and your goals. Um, but yeah, yeah, really, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's about to, to str clearly answer your question. It's, it's about, it's about looking at yourself. So that yeah. question, where am I limiting my business? Oh, it's you, man. For, was key for you. That was oh, huge. Oh yeah. 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 I wrote that down. Oh, okay. I thought you were, I, okay. I thought that was like, okay. No, I wrote okay, that down. Cool. Oh, that's good. Out of your mouth. That means it's important. That's, a, that's important to you. Notice how that, it just came. Bam. Yeah. And I don't have much to write because I've I? been listening. Oh, good. That's a, that's a beautiful art. Yeah. <laughs> so when we were talking about before we started recording, we were talking about some of the business, well, not really business, but kind of like life change books that you're you're into. Sure. Want to, want to give some, uh, you know, theses of those books and and you know, <laughs> some recommendations. So yeah, uh, when uh, Kevin, when you asked that question, I, I instantly went into like, oh, what would sound good? Like, <laughs> what are the business books that I've been reading? <laughs> and truthfully, all my business books are like in the back of my car and bent to bent and partially read because uh, I really find business books super boring. Um, I hate to say it, but like the most valuable business, business investment I've ever made is actually like paying for one-on-one -on -one education through, through a mentor. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of valuable information in books, but I, I'm just not like that kind of person that can mm -hmm. actually take what I've read in a book and actually apply it. Um, what I do get from books is um, – motivational books, like ones that, again, and it goes back to the theme about like, if you want to make your business better, you got to look in, into yourself, uh, then you got to improve yourself. And so most of the books that I read are total like self-help books. Well, I know you brought up some, some interesting ones though. When we were yeah. Talking. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one of the, one of the books that I, I recently read at the beginning of this year was, uh, by a, a, a girl named Brene Brown, uh, and it's called the gifts of imperfection, mm -hmm. um, letting go of who you think you are and embracing 
letting 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 go of who you are. Oh man, I always forget the title. So the long. subtitles. Not, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll put it on our show notes if anyone <laughs> yeah. wants to. Read yeah, stuff. And long and short, it's called um, the gifts of imperfection. Okay. Yeah. What was the what was your like number one takeaway from that book? Oh man, just embrace who you are. You are imperfect, and in that imperfection is a lot of beauty. She, um, Brene Brown, she did a lot of re- basically her what she researched um, was shame. She did a lot of research. She did like shame research or something like that. But basically she dug into like what shame was in humans and how humans felt shame and where they felt it and what it did for them and what it didn't do for them. Um, and and man, shame is something I feel all the time. And I, I think a lot of humans feel that all the time. They feel shameful about this, that, this, like a, like so, um, something that, that happened in the past. Um, you know, you walk into a room and, uh, like, well, I'll speak for myself. I walk into a room and I, I get very self-conscious about my effect on the people in the room and, and, um, if my presence is going to be positive for them or I just think I overthink everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and the great thing about her was she, she really broke down like, like how shame, like, um, how, how shame functions and what it does for people and what it doesn't do for people. Um, and just really just being okay with being imperfect um and and it was just it was super liberating man like i really just like i i want to say i I definitely am not so conscious about like my effect and me when i walk into a room anymore i just i do my best to be myself and that brings me to another point is like discovering who you are wow that's another journey (laughs) itself all right because then you get to this point where it's like um okay uh I'm, i'm 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 I'm, I'm not going to feel shame when in a room, but I, I think that requires like knowing like who you are um, uh, and, and, and just being completely okay with like that, that discovery process and not being perfect. So, yeah. Well, Ben, if, uh, if someone wants to contact you to get some photos taken, yeah. how can they reach you? Oh man. Call my cell phone. Seriously. Yeah. 630-640-2362. Um, I love talking to people on the phone. It's about making that personal connection, guys. Um, but you can always check out my website. Uh, you can Google This Is Feeling Photography uh, or just go to thisisfeeling.com. Um, if you try to find me on Facebook and I kind of mess this up, <laughs> um, you can't type this space is space feeling. Uh, it's actually This Is Feeling with no spaces. So if you're looking for me on Facebook, just do This Is Feeling uh, and it'll it'll pop right up. All right, cool. Thanks so much for your time, Ben. It's been fun. Yeah, was, thank you guys. That was excellent. Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate it. I, I love talking these ideas, so thanks, thanks for uh, letting me blab on. Yeah. <laughs>